What is up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2023 Mercedes-Benz GLS 450, courtesy of Mercedes-Benz of Hagerstown in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so we are in the GLS today because this is the S-Class in SUV form essentially. And there are actually some new features for the 2023 GLS as well. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering fuel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so MSRP for the GLS 450 will start at $81,800. Powering the Beast is a three liter turbocharged inline six cylinder with a mild hybrid system. This cranks out 362 horsepower at 5,500 RPM, 369 pound feet of torque coming in at 1,600 RPM. That power is sent to all four wheels through the Mercedes 4Matic all wheel drive system. Power is sent to the ground through a nine speed automatic with paddle shifters, which we will test out here in a little bit. Zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 5.9 seconds according to Mercedes-Benz at least with MPG numbers coming in at 18 in the city, 23 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel. And so before we do any kind of fun acceleration or pedal shifter test here in the GLS, wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes. It's labeled dynamic, which stands for dynamic select. It's a little silver toggle switch located just to the left of the touchpad controller. Through that, you are able to pick between eco, comfort, sport, off-road and individual of course individual being the one where you're able to tailor the driving dynamics to your own likings but ultimately adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response the all-wheel drive system engagement and the damping rates as well because this thing does come with an aromatic suspension which we'll get to in a little bit but anyways haven't got all of that out of the way now what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the paddle shifters and acceleration here to the test i want to see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react for us and I also want to see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right here we go found a straightaway in three two one go baby do you open a sport man yeah that's fun it's smooth too very nice smooth acceleration plenty of power definitely not going to have any issues with merging onto the highway not it's not as quick as I honestly thought it was going to be, but it's still plenty quick. So yeah, that's plenty enough for a GLS 450. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 14.8 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13.6 inch ventilated rear discs. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, that comes in at a very impressive 113 feet. Since there's nobody behind us, let's just test the braking feel. It's fine. Honestly, it's a little bit on the softer side, but the 113 foot number definitely speaks for itself. That is incredible braking power, especially in the size of the GLS. So definitely not going to have any issues bringing this thing to a stop. But then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get an independent double wishbone type front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension. But you also get an adaptive damping suspension that comes standard on the GLS 450. Essentially what that is, is it's going to monitor each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to the road imperfections, giving you a smoother ride but also tightening up that suspension during heavy cornering giving you better handling as well so really giving you the best of both worlds so always love seeing adaptive damping suspensions in vehicles and they still are very rare to see them usually only see them on like luxury vehicles like the gls i guess you could say so very nice ride quality because of that but mercedes actually takes it a step further giving this thing a self-leveling air suspension so that essentially gives you the ability to not only have a smoother ride but also kind of increase the aerodynamics for example i just put it in sport driving mode and it actually lowered the vehicle a little bit so it's going to give me better aerodynamics a little better acceleration but if i were to take it out of that sport driving mode i just put it in comfort it's actually going to automatically raise up the suspension a little bit kind of giving me more of a comfortable than driving mode so i'm always a big 
big fan of air suspensions. And because of that, because of the air suspension, because of the adaptive variable suspension, this thing is an incredibly smooth ride. That is definitely how I would describe the ride quality. It's absolutely amazing. Definitely among the best, without a doubt. As far as steering feel goes, it feels pretty much like you would expect the GLS 450 to feel like. It's weighted a little bit on the heavier side of things, but not too heavy. Definitely not a loose steering feel, which you quite often will find in SUVs, but that's not the case here in the GLS 450. So I do like the steering feel in this thing. And then touching on cabin noise, it is an extremely serene cabin. So this thing feels like a luxury SUV in terms of cabin noise when you're driving at highway speed. So I absolutely love that as well. And touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. I will say there's third row headrest. If they are up, they are going to impede visibility slightly. So just keep that in mind. But other than that, visibility is great, honestly. Rain sensing windshield wipers are going to come standard on this thing as well, helping with forward visibility. And there is an available head-up display that goes for $1,100 if you were interested. That's going to project your speed, speed limit, and safety features up on your windshield. Again, assisting with forward visibility yet again. But anyways, that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Mercedes-Benz GLS 450. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2023 Mercedes-Benz GLS 450 finished in polar white is the exterior color name that we have on this one. So as always, let's go ahead and get started with where this one is made. First character of the VIN is the number four, indicating that the GLS 450 is built and assembled in the US, specifically Alabama, in case you were curious. But that doesn't mean the parts aren't coming from Germany because the engine and transmission are actually coming from Germany. It's just that the final assembly point is in Alabama. So let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Twin silver slat front grille does come standard. Illuminated star is an option for an additional $500. I always like to mention that if you wanted that. Chrome front lip is going to come standard and I do like the chrome accents, the dual chrome accents to both sides there. My opinion, that definitely looks good and they are there because we do have an AMG line package with us here today, which does give us a more aggressive front fascia. The standard front fascia is gonna be a single chrome bar on the sides, the corners there. So it's gonna be a little differentiation there between the standard setup of the GLS 450 and the AMG line package, which goes for $4,350. There's also a, uh, a night version of the AMG line package which goes for $4,750 in case you were curious. But anyways, to the sides, LED headlights with LED daytime running lights do come standard. Get the automatic feature as well, meaning when it starts to get dark and at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. Also the automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night, it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction. It's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically then bounce it back up to high beams for you there. So so definitely a very nice convenience feature and I didn't mention it yet. There are front air curtains to the sides there helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination then as well. So overall, very good looking front end without a doubt. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the GLS. All right, and so but now since we are around to the side of this one, raised aluminum roof rails will come standard satin chrome window surrounds. Also coming standard, there is some rear privacy glass, of course, coming standard as well. You can also find some chrome trim on the door handles to tie together with the window surrounds. Taking a look down below, the, there are available running boards. Obviously we don't have them today, but they are available if you wanted them and then illuminated running boards go for $650 if you wanted those as well. You don't really need them though, at least for me. I had no issues whatsoever getting in and out of this thing, but body color power adjustable side mirrors will come standard that will be heated with LED integrated turn signals as well and with the power folding function to go along with all that. So when you actually lock this thing up, mirrors are going to automatically tilt in towards the vehicle and then when you unlock it, they're going to tilt back out. So that's pretty cool. Then take a look down at the wheel setup. So many different wheel options for the GLS. 20 inch eight spoke aluminum alloys is gonna be the standard setup. However, with the AMG line packages like we have today, you're gonna to find 21 inch AMG specific alloys. And then there are 20 inch, 21 inch, and 22 inch designs available across the board as well, which you can build of course on Mercedes website. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, check out that rear spoiler up top there. Let me get a little bit closer because I don't remember seeing this on the GLS last year. As a matter of fact, I would have immediately noticed this. This is such an aggressive rear spoiler up top. I absolutely love it. That is such a cool look. 
Well done, Mercedes. But anyways, rear spoiler with an integrated brake light does come standard. Rear window wiper back there as well. You got the chrome trim tying together the two rear tail lights, of course. And by the way, LED tail lights do come standard on this thing. I like that. You do have some chrome trim all the way to the bottom there to kind of tie in together with the chrome trim with the tail lights there. But there is integrated dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips. I always love when they're integrated into the rear bumper, like in this case. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of the GLS, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a hands-free power tailgate that does come standard. So that is definitely very nice. So there's a button on the driver's side door, there's a button on the key fob, and there is of course a button on the tailgate itself. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 17.4 cubic feet behind that third row. Yes, the GLS is a three row SUV. Behind the second row with that third row folded down, that's gonna come in at 42.7 cubic feet. And then with all rows folded, 84.7 cubic feet, which is actually quite impressive for a luxury three row SUV. So no issues there, but I did wanna mention to fold those seats down, there are buttons in the cargo area itself. So they are power folding. So very easy to use, extremely convenient as well, but can find cargo lighting back there. Of course, there are chrome plated tie down anchors. There is a cargo cover. There's a little bit of side net storage. There's a grocery bag hook back there, 12 volt power outlet, really quite a bit. Everything you could possibly need back there. If you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you are going to find a spare tire. I always like that. And believe it or not, there is a button in that cargo area to lower the suspension by up to two inches. So to make loading and unloading a little bit easier for you back there. So didn't want to forget to mention that. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way up to that third row legroom. That's going to come in at 34.6 inches for reference. I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. There are some cup holders for both passengers in the back as well. And to my surprise, you got dual phone charging ports for both third row rear passengers. So if they have a tablet and a phone, they could charge both of them up on both sides at once. That's pretty cool. Of course, rear ventilation can be had for all three rows that come standard. It's gonna be found on the top part or the roof or the ceiling, whatever you wanna call it of the GLS. So that's definitely gonna help with comfort for the third row as well. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the second row legroom that comes in in an impressive 41.9 inches for reference. I mean, even six feet tall, this is how much space I have back there. Regarding that second row, you can get it in either bench seating or captain's chairs. The captain's chairs is going to be the option, but it is a free option. Believe it or not, for Mercedes-Benz, they are offering a free option. So it comes standard with the bench seating. You can get the captain's chairs for no charge. So that's nice. Heated second row goes for $580 if you wanted that. Power second row side window sun shades. Again, another $580 option. I love that. Five zone climate control is actually an option for $400. So four zone climate control comes standard. That gives both passengers in the middle row an option to adjust their own climate control basically. But that five zone climate control, that's gonna give the third row passengers the ability to adjust their own climate control then as well. So that's pretty cool. Of course, phone charging ports in that second row, 115 volt power outlet. You don't always see that, I like that. And there is a warmth and comfort package because for $1,850, that gives you heated second row armrests along with a bunch of other things as well. But that was a kind of cool feature that you'd never see um, any other even luxury manufacturer. So I thought that was pretty cool. But anyways, then making our way up to the front seats, power adjustable front seats do come standard. Memory settings for both three drivers and three passengers. You'd always get the memory settings for the passenger side. So I like that. MB Tex upholstery comes standard. Leather seating available for $1,620 and then Napa leather seating available for $2,990 if you'd rather have that. Heated front seats do come standard like that. Ventilated front seats come standard. That actually was newly standard for the 2022 GLS. Fun fact for you there. Multi-contoured front seats with the massage function that goes for $1,100 if you wanted that option. Overall, Seat comfort was all right. Certainly not gonna have any issues there, but I will say Mercedes, if you were watching this, the horizontal seams never quite do it for me. If you were to somehow change that to vertical seams like you do on some of your other vehicles, those are the more comfortable seats in my personal opinion. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel. It is power adjustable. It is leather wrapped that comes standard, but there is a 
wood leather combination that goes for $600 and that is the setup that we have today. So I love the wood steering wheel. I think that's so cool. Heated steering wheel then goes for $250 if you wanted that option. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup and let me start by showing you guys the key. All of your buttons are located on one side of the key. You got lock, unlock, and the button to pop the rear tailgate, of course. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put the key on my pocket, press the brake, and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee. And so once started up, when it comes to the gauges, a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster will come standard. I love the gauges on this thing. And the reason being is because you can completely customize this gauge cluster. And so simply by hitting the home button on the steering wheel, you can slide all the way to the right to designs and display where it gives you the options between classic, sport, progressive, and understated completely changing the look of the gauges. And that's my favorite thing to play around with whenever I review a Mercedes because most of them have it if they have that 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster and I love it. But anyways, of course you have a digital speedometer. There's your outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's a giant digital speedometer if you would rather choose to display that. There's all kinds of different statistics, of course, radio information, safety features, the list goes on. So basically everything you could possibly want on the digital gauges there. Now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality because there is a new standard feature for 2023 and that is the panorama glass roof now coming standard. So last year if you remember a regular power moonroof would come standard but the panoramic glass roof was an option. Now that option has become a standard feature for the 2023 GLS 450. So wanted to mention that along with metallic paint. I think I forgot to mention that as well. But anyways, home light controls are at the three different garage doors found just below the rear view mirror there. That comes standard. Four zone climate control, like I said, coming standard. Five zone climate control is going to be optional. Gray linden wood trim is going to come standard, but there are so many different wood trims available for the GLS, including an oak, walnut, ashwood trim. So they, there's plenty of different options to check check out there. So that's pretty cool. And the best part is about the wood trims. It really does make it smell like a new home in here as opposed to a new car. So that's always pretty cool. I love Mercedes for that, but 64 colors of ambient lighting. And I always say Mercedes Benz does ambient lighting so freakishly well. So, so many different color options. And the best part, it's so stinking vibrant. So much more vibrant ambient lighting in Mercedes compared to some of the competition there. Heated and cooled front cup holders, by the way, go for $180. We got those. So always like to mention that because whether you have a coffee or a soda or an energy drink, they got you covered with those heated and cold cup holders. So that's pretty cool. So just in front of the cup holders here, by the way, you have a wireless phone charger. You have a couple charging ports. Of course, the heated and cool cup holders themselves. Just behind the touchpad controller, you actually have the ability to adjust the air suspension. In case you were curious where that button was located. And within the center armrest, there is definitely a decent amount of storage in there with a single phone charging port. But overall, as far as interior quality goes, it is wonderful. The only thing I could possibly think of that they might be missing, perhaps, perhaps is a suede headliner. I think that would look pretty cool. Not that this headliner is bad. I don't mind. It's just, I, I like the suede headliner. I don't know. Now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here. 12.3 inch color touchscreen display does come standard. Now I did say it was touchscreen and it is, but it can also be controlled by using the touchpad controller and buttons located just behind the cup holders. And there is voice controls by simply saying, Hey Mercedes. How can I help? Change the ambient lighting color. I'm turning on the ambient light. It got close. <laughs> Anyways, Bluetooth and audio streaming do come standard. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, factory navigation system does come standard as well. You can check out your climate control settings up there, the ambient lighting settings, as I was alluding to there. There's also a cool theme section at the bottom. So if you swipe up from there, you got adventure trip, experience and efficiency, lounge and bunch of different things that completely change the look of the inside by simply pressing one button, including things like the ambient lighting colors. It'll open and close the panoramic moonroof. So it really changes the look of everything. So I always like to check that out. And of course, your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound system on the GLS 450, we'll get a standard 13 speaker Burmester sound system, 590 watts, dual subwoofers, nine channel digital amplifier. So Having gotten that all out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio now, see what we got playing today, and let's check out the clarity of this one. Yeah, man, that's fine. Yeah, absolutely no issues with that sound system. Plenty of bass because of the dual subwoofers. Clarity was what really impressed me. 13 speakers is a good bit, so 
Definitely like the sound system and I love the aluminum speaker covers from Burmester as well. Anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the GLS 450 in reverse, you of course will find a very, very, very high definition rear view camera coming standard. But not only that, also a 360 degree monitor to the left, giving you that bird's eye view, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start front side, side curtain airbags do come standard, driver's knee airbag also standard, and there are second row side impact airbags available for an additional $700 if you wanted those. Also in the back, you will get latch, AKA lower anchors to tethers to children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, active brake assist, emergency call service, attention assist, cross wind assist, side blind zone assist, parktronic with active parking assist. That one's nuts where essentially the GLS parks itself for you auto dimming rear view mirror and an auto dimming driver's side mirror, which doesn't always come standard. So that's pretty nice as well. But did want to mention one more safety kind of package available. It's called the driver assistance plus package. It goes from $1,950. That gives you adaptive cruise control, active steering assist, evasive steering assist, active brake assist with cross traffic function, emergency stop assist, speed limit assist, blind spot assist, lane keep assist, and route based speed adaptation as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the GLS, 450 great ride quality that's certainly where the gls excels the ride quality and the lack of cabin noise it's a very serene cabin as well so very luxury like as you would expect of course but excellent interior quality i love the wood trims in this thing it really does make you smell like you're building a new home so it's absolutely wonderful there as far as room for improvement goes i really think safety should be standard so there's so many different safety options like that driver assistance plus package or even just the second row side impact airbags that go for 700 dollars. you get that standard on a toyota corolla for whatever reason mercedes charges you 700 bucks for it but i think if you're spending this much money safety really should be standard but that kind of leads me into my second constructive criticism System, which is this thing can get very, very pricey very quick. I think ours tops out at right around $94,000. So it's up 13 or $14,000 from MSRP simply because there's so many different options, which I guess is good because it allows you to personalize it. But again, it can get pricey. But anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.